To bring together all the concepts presented in this section, we have an activity where we use the Web Services Server Connector to convert a process to a web service. We will use prospect tracking, which we built in our developer course. In this activity, we will convert prospect tracking into a web service. We will then deploy the web service and call the web service using Atomsphere's HTTP Client Connector. In a previous class, you created two different environments, production and test. The regional Atom Cloud is attached to the production environment, and the regional test Atom Cloud is attached to the test environment. In this exercise, we'll confirm that environments and atoms are configured correctly in your training account. So we're going to check the environment setup under Manage, Atom Management. We'll check to see that we have a production environment with Atom Cloud attached, as well as a test environment with Test Atom Cloud attached. If you find that you do not have these environments created or correctly configured, you can follow the instructions in your activity guide to create the environments and atoms that you need. When we're developing a new integration project, it's important to organize the Component Explorer in the Build tab by setting up folders to organize processes and components. This enables you to configure and store a unique process containing the workflow and processing rules for your business scenario. So we're going to create a folder in this account for this course. We're going to create that under the root folder. Click New Folder and this will be called API. Now within the API folder, we're going to create another folder specifically for this exercise. So we'll come to our API folder, click the drop down, choose new folder, and we'll call this one section two, web service. We'll be working with and altering prospect tracking from our associate developer class. So we'll need to copy the process from its original location into the new folder. So in the associate developer folder, we'll expand in the prospect tracking folder. And then next to the prospect tracking process, we'll use the drop down and we'll select copy. We're going to copy this to the new folder that we just created, our Section 2 Web Service folder. We'll accept all the other defaults and click OK. So now we'll expand our API folder, expand our Section 2 folder, and we'll find that process that we just copied into the folder and we'll open the process. We're going to change the name. We're going to append a underscore WS to the end of the process name. And this is going to help us distinguish this new version of prospect tracking from the original version in the associate developer folder. So we'll click Save. And now we're going to begin to edit this process to convert it into a web service. So we're going to start by changing the start shape to the web services server connector. So on the process canvas, we'll click on the start shape, and this opens the general settings tab. Under the connector dropdown, we will change this from Salesforce to the web services server connector. Now notice that this has changed the start shapes action to listen. And for processes starting with a listen action, it's recommended that you disable capture run dates and enable allow simultaneous executions. So we're going to follow the start shapes prompt and click make the recommended changes for me. No connection is needed because the connection settings are managed by the Atom web server. We do need to create a new operation and we'll do that by clicking the plus icon to create new. So in this new operation component, we're going to call this get prospects. Our operation type will be get. The object will be prospects. Our expected input type will leave as none. Our response output type will be multiple XML objects. 
Our response profile is going to be found in our Section 2 folder, and it is the SF Account Query Response. Now note that our simple URL path, which is a read-only field, is formed as values are entered in the Options tab. Now this will be entered as a resource path element in the HTTP Client Connector in a later step. But for now, we can click Save and Close, and then we'll click OK to return to the Process Canvas. Next, we need to add a Salesforce connector to the process. So from the Shapes palette, we'll find that Salesforce connector shape and drag it onto our Process Canvas. For the connection, we're going to load the Boomi Training SF connection, and it's going to be in our Section 2 folder. We'll also load the account query by type operation from that Section 2 folder. And if we were to take a look at this operation, we would see that a parameter of type is set there. Now, to apply a value for this parameter, we're going to go to the Parameters tab, we're going to add a new parameter. Our input will be our type parameter. It will be a static input, and the value will be prospect. So now that the connector is configured, we can click OK, return to the process canvas. We're going to disconnect the start shape from the decision shape and reconnect it to the Salesforce connector. Go ahead and move these shapes out of the way here for a second. And now we'll connect the Salesforce connector shape to the decision shape. Now you notice that at the end of the true and false paths, we have a stop shape for the true path and we have notify and exception down the false path. We want to replace both of these with a return document shape. The return document shape is necessary in the listener process to ensure that the data is returned to the web service client application once the process executes. So we'll remove the stop shape from the true path, and we'll remove both the notify and exception shapes from the false path. We'll drag our return document shape onto the process canvas, connect the false path, we'll copy the return document shape and paste it into the true path, and save our process. So our web service is now properly configured and it's ready to be deployed. So in order for the web service to be able to be called by a client, it needs to be deployed or published. So we're going to deploy to our production environment to which the Atom Cloud is attached. From the Build tab, click Create Packaged Components. Now you'll notice that our Prospect Tracking WS process is pre-selected. So we can click Next. We'll enter a version for all. and create our packaged component. Once that's successfully created, we can deploy. We'll deploy to the production environment. Click Next. The package component version that we just created is pre-selected, so we don't need to make any changes on this screen. We'll click Next again, and then Deploy. And our deployment was successful. Now instead of using a third-party application to call the listener process, we will leverage the HTTP client connector to use Atomsphere as the web service client. So in our Section 2 web service folder, we're going to create a new process. We're going to call this WS Client. We're going to change the start shape to a no data start shape. Starting with a no data start shape allows you to modify and reuse this client for other methods. 
You could also place a message shape after the start shape to populate the documents with the needed request data, which would then be sent to the service via the HTTP client connector. So run the shapes palette, we'll click and drag the HTTP client connector onto the process canvas. We're going to change the action from get to send, and we'll create a new connection. We'll call our connection Adam Cloud. We're going to change the authentication type from none to basic. Now the base URL, username, and password are all going to be found under the Atom's shared web server settings. So since you're going to be navigating between Atom Management and the Build tab, it's helpful if you open two tabs in your web browser. And once I'm in Atom Management, I'll find the production Atom Cloud. And under Settings and Configuration, I'll choose Shared Web Server. Now because this web service will be internally consumed and does not require enhanced security beyond basic authentication, leveraging a username and token, and because user management is enabled at the process level, the API type is set to intermediate. Now the base URL for all API requests on Boomi's regional Atom Clouds is defined here under the shared web server settings. So you can copy the base URL for API requests from this production Atom, and then paste it in the URL field in the HTTP client connection. Now for the username and password, I'm going to return to Atom Management and under the shared web server settings, I'm going to switch to the user management tab. Now the default username is the Atoms instance ID. However, up to 200 additional users may be added and tokens can be generated for each one. So I'm going to copy the username and then paste it in the username field in my connection. Come back to user management and generate a token. I'm going to copy that so that I can paste it back in the HTTP client connection. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure that I save. If you don't save after generating a token, you will encounter 400 level errors when you test your process. Okay, so we can save and close our client connection. And now we'll create a new operation. And this will be called get SF prospects. For our options, we want to select a response profile type of XML. And our response profile is going to be found in our Section 2 folder, and it's our SF account query response profile. We can leave the content type as text plain. We do want to change the HTTP method to get, and be sure to check return HTTP responses. Now we've already configured the base URL in our Atom Cloud HTTP client connection. The remainder of the URL path is entered as a resource path element here in the HTTP client operation. So this may be copied and pasted from the listener processes start shape operation or you can simply enter it by hand. It's WS simple get prospects. Now if you do choose to copy and paste this, do not include the leading forward slash. So after entering this resource path element, we can click save and close, click OK, and then save our process. So we'll add a stop shape to the process canvas, and then we'll connect our three shapes. And we're ready to run a test. We're going to call the web service by running a test of the WS client process using the test Atom Cloud.
So our test has executed successfully. If we go to the stop shape and then take a look at shape source data, we can see the prospect data that was returned to us from our listener process. This video concludes now, but you can complete this exercise using the steps outlined in the activity guide.